Hey everybody, so today we're going to take a look at my new printer. So this is the Ender 3 S1 Plus. So we'll get into why or what makes this a plus version uh, and uh, some of the differences and similarities to the S1 and the S1 Pro. So it, it kind of falls in, in between those two. Uh, now before this I did have the Super Racer which is a perfectly fine printer. Uh, the only downside or the only negative aspect to that printer was that Bowden setup which was kind of terrible. Uh, but other than that, uh, if you were experienced with a 3D printer then that's something you could have definitely overcome. Uh, for me I was just too new, uh, you know, kind of to the 3D printing scene so I, I found it very difficult to kind of manage and to kind of get that uh, Bowden extruder working. So I ended up trading it in for this. Well, not trading it in. I ended up returning it and getting this instead. Uh, the other reason I wanted a different type of printer or, or a, another printer was I wanted a bigger build volume. So this is where the plus comes in. Uh, this is a 300 by 300 by 300 build volume. So definitely uh, a bigger build, build volume than the Super Racer, which is advertised at 260. But because it is cylindrical, it's actually about 230 so definitely smaller than this 300 by 300 uh, and as you can see here I've already taken full advantage of that larger build volume made this football helmet all in one piece came out really nice and then this Ironman helmet which is in three pieces uh, which is the top dome the chin part and the face plate so let's talk about some of the differences and similarities to the S1 and the S1 Pro. So the first thing is the Sprite Extruder. So the Sprite Extruder, is, it's not exactly the same as the S1s and not exactly the same as the S1 Pros. So it is a Sprite Extruder. Uh, it has worked wonderfully for me. It's been uh, basically bulletproof. I've had zero issues. So this does have an all metal body, unlike the S1. But unfortunately, it doesn't have the all metal hot end like the S1 Pro. So it kind of sits in the middle. So the S1 Pro has the all metal hot end, and then the S1 has uh, some plastic bits on the body. This is all metal, but not an all metal hot end. Uh, one of the other differences here from the S1 is that it comes with a touch screen versus. The screen with the dial so this has the same touch screen as the s1 pro uh, as far as like the chassis the body uh, it does I think exactly copy the s1 so it's pretty much exactly the same this one does not come with the light bar this is actually something that I added after market uh, and that light bar actually is uh, from a Creality CR10S Pro Smart. So if you're looking to add this to your Plus, uh, your S1 Plus, it's it fits exactly. So this is exactly what you would need. The only difference with the Smart Pro is unfortunately the connector is different. So I did have to get a light bar from uh, a S1 Pro and splice it together. So just know that the light bar itself, physically, all the parts here fit exactly. Pay no mind to the Gorilla Tape. Uh, but the connector, unfortunately, on the Smart Pro is different than on the Ender 3s. So, but other than that, those are pretty much the biggest differences and similarities to the S1 and the S1 Pro. Uh, and to be honest, this printer has been great. Uh, it has printed very well. It's pretty much been a workhorse for me. I've had probably about a, close to 150 different prints, definitely over 200 hours of print time. Uh, I've, I think the longest I've had it printing was about two and a half days straight uh, and it, it it performed great. It, there was no issues, no, f f I think I've had one failed print, I want to say. One print where I've started and it ran for a few hours and then it ended up failing. Uh, that was the only type of failure that I had. The other stuff is usually stuff right at the beginning, uh, layer adhesion, that kind of thing, or bed adhesion I should say. Uh, is that uh, that's the only type of failures that I've had, which usually are right away. Um, as far as bed adhesion, I have had some issues, not a whole lot. Right out of the box, it performed perfectly. I was able to 
put it together, which basically was just kind of the bed, the gantry. There was two bolts on each side. Uh, just put those together. There were some connections that had to be made to the stepper motors, the sensors. Uh, super straightforward. Instructions were well laid out. And that was basically it for putting it together. So after putting it together, just leveled the bed, which was something that was, for me at least, was super intimidating. And that's one of the reasons that I got a Delta printer to begin with, was just because I didn't want to have to deal with the bed leveling. So after kind of doing it for a few, t you know, doing it a few times, you kind of get used to it, used to the process. Uh, and it's just one of those things that it may be super intimidating at first, but once you get it down, it's fine. So right out of the box, it printed just fine. And then after maybe about a month, I started noticing that there were some definite low spots and some high spots uh, in the first layer. So it was just kind of like it wasn't, it wasn't level, it wasn't straight. Um, and I did notice that there was some warping in the spring steel sheet, but I figured, well, once it's kind of on the magnetized build plate, it, it should be fine. Uh, so I ended up getting a new uh, build sheet, which is actually, I'm not even sure what material it is. It's like a rubber plastic. I don't remember what, what it was. Uh, but this is actually from a CR10, uh, and it works just fine. Um, but I wasn't sure if it was the actual spring steel sheet or if it was the bed, because looking at the bed, I actually noticed like a bow in the bed, but I wasn't sure if it was just me uh, kind of not realizing or me seeing things. So I just decided to re-level the bed. I actually took the bed off a couple of times just to make sure that it was straight, make, make sure that nothing was on too tight. So I adjusted everything, put the bed back on, still with that warped uh, spring steel sheet and it just wasn't it wasn't working I did end up actually turning the sheet around on the this is the spring steel sheet here if, as you can see it has like a, a smooth side I ended up turning it around and then using some glue stick and that actually ended up working so at that point I definitely knew okay it has to be the spring steel sheet that's warped uh, and sure enough I got a replacement and it worked just fine so uh, again I did end up taking on the bed off a couple of times and I did actually end up getting a level even though technically that's not, I mean, that's not how you level a bed by actually leveling it. But I got a level just to make sure that my baseline was straight. Because when you put the bed on and you start putting those those knobs on, you don't really know, you know, what's straight and what's not just by, at least I couldn't tell just by eyeing it. So I ended up using an actual level just to make sure that it was actually all true, truly leveled on all sides. And then from there, I started with, you know, the paper... Uh, and just making sure that that extruder was, was touching just at the right spot. So that was the only issue I had. So started out great, slowly started getting worse. But now in retrospect, uh, it was definitely that that steel uh, spring steel sheet that unfortunately started to warp. So uh, I actually did like that spring steel sheet. It did have nice texture. It, it unfortunately didn't hold up that well, simply because it kind of got scratched and the hot end kind of dipped into it a little bit and put some dents and divots in it so it definitely saw uh, some action in it it had some uh, some damage on it so uh, I did replace it this has been working just fine I mean I made this Iron Man helmet on that that uh, rubber sheet or plastic sheet whatever it is and then I also made this piece on there so if you are looking for a large format FDM printer and you want something that's going to be reliable, I would definitely say give this a try. Uh, there's been a lot of people on the Facebook groups that have had a lot of issue with bed leveling. And I think it really just comes down to experience. A lot of people come into 3D printers or 3D printing and not really understanding that bed leveling is super important. But also, too, your first layer doesn't have to be pristine perfect. It basically just has to be good enough to adhere to the bed. So I see a lot of people that they have almost perfect 
uh, first layers, but they're still wrecking their brain trying to get it even better. So I think for those people, they spend more time trying to get the perfect first layer and they just end up not printing anything because it's not perfect. But it doesn't really have to be perfect. It definitely has to be good enough, uh, but it doesn't have to be perfect. So if you're looking into a 3D printer, just know first layer should be good. It doesn't have to be perfect if it's not. It's not. Uh, auto bed leveling should help fix all that. Unfortunately, it doesn't. I honestly do think that there may be an issue with auto bed leveling. Sometimes I just feel that it doesn't work correctly. Uh, I am planning to get Creality's Sonic Pad and try out Clipper to see if maybe Clipper straightens that out. I'm not sure if it's just the stock firmware that, that Creality runs on these machines, but there's definitely something wrong with auto bed leveling. Um, but as long as you can manually level the bed, you'll be fine. I mean, I've created you know, these huge prints, multi-day prints, uh, and they were just fine. So if you are looking for a large format printer, the S1, definitely take a look at the S1 Plus. It's been super easy to put, it was super easy to put together. It's been super easy to maintain. Really haven't done much as far as maintenance, just taking a brush, uh, cleaning out all the, the fans, the wheels, uh, and of course keeping that bed clean making sure that the belts are tight um, and that's basically been it nothing uh, you know su nothing that's been super invasive as far as taking the whole thing apart I did take the bed apart uh, but that was pretty much useless as far as diagnosing that issue because it wasn't the issue or I mean I shouldn't say useless it, it was useful in diagnosing it uh, but it wasn't the issue so that was just kind of something i chose to do just to make sure that that was correct in the end that didn't end up being the problem so is the ender 3 s1 plus for you well that's going to depend on a couple things one is do you really need a 300 by 300 by 300 build volume and the other is the price at 530 dollars, it sits at the top of the price range but it doesn't have all the best features it's missing the all metal hot end it's missing the led light so it has some glaring omissions there which it should have had at that price it's sitting at the top of the range so it should have had every single feature that the s1 s1 pro offer too uh, so that's kind of one of those things that creality just kind of missed so i'm guessing that in the next few months they're going to come out with another one uh maybe an s1 plus v2 with all those extra features who knows but for my money, I just wanted something that was really reliable, and I wanted something with support. Uh, Ender 3s have become kind of ubiquitous. They're everywhere. Uh, talk to anybody who's into th into 3D printing. They know exactly what an Ender 3 is. So that's kind of what I wanted, especially coming from a Super Racer, which unfortunately didn't have the best support. So for me, that was really important. So that's why I did decide to go with the S1+. Plus. Uh, I did look at others. Uh, other printers like the artillery sidewinder x2 it is about a hundred dollars cheaper but I, I just wasn't sure if i wanted to go with a lesser known brand like artillery but in the end i'm super happy uh, with this printer the only thing that i do wish is that it was a little faster but with the creality sonic pad coming out within the next couple weeks i'm hoping that i can get one so this way i can test out clipper and this way i can see if i can max out the speed on this thing but anyway, stay tuned for that one, and uh, thanks for your time.